The Cube's live coverage is made possible by funding from Dell Technologies, creating technologies that drive human progress. Welcome back to Barcelona, Spain, everyone. It's the Cube Live at MWC 23, day three of four days of Cube coverage. It's like a cannon of Cube content coming right at you. I'm Lisa Martin with Dave Nicholson. We've got Dell and VMware here, going to be talking about the ecosystem partnerships and what they're doing to further organizations in the telco industry. Please welcome Jared Woodry, Director of Partner Engineering, Open Telecom Ecosystem Lab, or OTEL. Odin Solomon is here as well, Director of Product Management, VMware Service Provider, and Edge Business Unit at VMware. Guy, it's great to have you on the program. Well, thank great you for having me. Here. Welcome to theCUBE. So Jared, first question for you, talk about OTEL. I know there's a big announcement this week, but give the audience context and understanding of what OTEL is and how it works. Sure, so the Open Telecom Ecosystem Lab uh, is physically located in Round Rock, Texas, is the, the heart and soul of it. But uh, this week we also just announced uh, opening up the uh, Cork, Ireland uh, extension of OTEL. What the reason uh, for our existence is to, to try and make it as easy as possible for our partners and customers to come together and to, to re-aggregate this disaggregated ecosystem. So that comes with a number of automation tools uh, and basically just giving a known good testing environment so that tests that happen in our lab are as close to real world as they possibly can be and make it as transparent and open as possible for both partners like VMware as well as customers. Oh, good. Talk about what you're doing with Dell and Otel, and give us an, an, a customer example, maybe of one that you're working with, or even even mentioning it by, you know, a high level descriptor if you have to. Yeah. So uh, uh, we provide a, a telco cloud platform, which is essentially uh, a vertical in VMware. Uh, the telco cloud platform is uh, serving network function uh, vendors such as uh, Ericsson, Nokia, Mavenir, and so on. Uh, what we do with, uh, with Dell as part of this partnership is uh, essentially uh, complementing the platform uh, with some additional functionality that is not coming out of the box. Um, we used to have a, a, a data protection uh, in the past, but uh, this is no longer uh, our main uh, business focus. Uh, so we do provide APIs that we can expose and uh, uh, work together with uh, uh, Dell PPDF solution um, so customer can benefit from this and uh, leverage uh, the partnership and have overall solution that is not coming out of the box from uh, VMware. Yeah. I'm curious from a VMware perspective, uh, VMware is associated often with the V in yeah. VMware, virtualization, yeah. and we've seen a transition over time uh, between sort of flavors of virtualization. Um, and what, what, what is the mix currently today between, in the, in the telecom space, between environments that are leveraging what we would think of as more traditional virtualization with you know, full-blown Linux, Windows operating systems in a VM versus the world of uh, containerized microservices. What does that mix look like today? Where do you see it going? Yeah, so uh, the VMware uh, Telco Cloud Platform uh, exists for uh, about eight years. Um, NFV started around that time. Um, uh, you might heard about OpenStack uh, in addition to VMware. Uh, so uh, this has definitely uh, uh, helped the uh, network uh, equipment providers with virtualizing their network functions. Uh, those are typically VNFs, virtualized network functions inside uh, um, um, the VMs. Uh, essentially we have uh, 4G applications, so core applications, um, EPC, uh, we have IMS. Uh, those are typically, I would say, maybe 80 or 90% of the ecosystem right now. Uh, 5G is associated with cloud native network functions. Okay. So 5G is getting started now, uh, getting deployed. There is an exponential uh, growth on the core side. Um, now when we expand towards the edge of the network, we see uh, more potential growth. This is 5G uh, RAN. Uh, we, we see the VRAN, we see the open RAN. Uh, we see early POCs, we see um, uh, field trials that are starting. Uh, we obviously has a, have a production customer now. You just spoke to one. Uh, so this is really starting. Cloud Native is really starting. I would say about 10 to 20% of the uh, network functions these days are uh, Cloud Native. That's what we do. Jared, question for you. 
You mentioned data protection, a huge topic there obviously from a security perspective. Data protection used to be the responsibility of the CSPs. You guys are changing that. Can you talk a little bit about how you're doing that and what Dell's play there is? Yeah, so Power Protect Data Management is a, is a product that's produced by Dell. So what this does is it enables uh, uh, power, uh, data uh, protection over uh, virtual cloud, uh, as well as the physical infrastructure of, of, a, of specifically in this case, uh, of a telecoms ecosystem. So what this does is enables uh, an ability to rapidly redeploy and back up uh, existing configurations all the way up to the, to the TCP and TCA that, that was the, the basis of our work here with VMware. So you've offloaded that responsibility from the CSPs, you've freed them from that. Uh, so, so the work that we did, honestly, was to make sure that we have a very clear and concise and accurate uh, uh, procedures for how to conduct this as well. And to put this through a realistic and real world as if it was in uh, a telecom's uh, own production network, what that would actually look like and what it would take to, pull up, uh, to bring it back up as well. So our responsibility is to make sure that when we, when we provide these products to the customers that not only do they work exactly as they're intended to, but there is also documentation to help support them to, and to enable them to have their exact specifications met by as well. Got it. So talk about a little bit about Otel's expansion into Quark, what you guys are doing together to enable CSPs here in EMEA. Yeah, so the reason why we opened up a facility in Cork, Ireland was uh, to give, uh, you know, for an EMEA audience, for an EMEA CSPs, an ability to look and feel and touch the, the, some of the products that we're working on. It also just facilitates an ease, especially for European-based uh, partners, to have a chance to very easily come to a, a lab environment. Uh, the, the difference, though, honestly, is the, between Round Rock, Texas and Cork, Ireland, is that it's virtually an extension of the same thing, right? Like the physical locations uh, make it easier to provide access and obviously to showcase uh, the, the products that we've developed uh, with partners. Um, but the, the reality is, is that it's more than just the physical location, it's more about the ability and ease uh, by which uh, customers and partners can access the labs. So we should be expecting a lot of Tito's vodka to be consumed in uh, in Cork at some point. Of Might course. change the national <laughs> we beverage. We need to, to have some international <laughs> exchange. Yeah, no, that's 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 good to know. Um, I, I'm, Odette, on the on the VMware side of things, there's a large group of folks who have VMware skill sets. Correct. The telecom industry is moving into this world of the kind of agility that those folks are familiar with. Uh, how do people come out of the traditional VMware virtualization world and move into that world of cloud native applications and serve the telecom space? What would your recommendation be if you were speaking at a VMUG, you know, a VMware users group meeting with all of your telecom background? What would you, what would you share with them that's critical to understand about how telecom is different or how telecoms spot in its evolution might be different than the traditional uh, IT space. So, um, we're talking about the people with uh, uh, the knowledge and the background yeah, of... Uh, yeah, I'm a V yeah. expert, yeah. let's say, yeah. and, and I'm looking into the future, mm -hmm. and I hear that there are 80,000 people in Barcelona at this event, and I hear that Dell is building optimized yeah. infrastructure for specifically for telecom, and that VMware is involved, and I'm, I'm an expert in mm -hmm. VMware, and I want to be involved. What do, I, what do I need to do? I know it's a little bit outside of the box question, but, it's, but especially against the backdrop of, of uh, you know, kind of economic headwinds globally, okay. there are a lot of people facing transitions. What, what are your thoughts there? So first of all, we, um, we understand the telco requirements, we understand the telco needs, and we make sure that what we learn from the customers, we, what we learn from the partners, um, uh, is being built into the VMware products. Uh, and simplicity is number one thing that is important for us. We want the customer experience, we want the user experience uh, to be uh, uh, the same as they know, uh, even though we are transitioning into cloud native uh, networks that require more frequent upgrades and has more, they have more complexity to be, to be honest. And what we do in our vertical inside VMware, uh, we are um, focusing on automation, telco cloud automation, telco cloud service assurance, uh, think of it as a wrapper around the SDDC stack that we have from VMware uh, that really simplifies the operations for the telcos because it's really a challenge about you know, skill set. 
Um, you need to be a DevOps SRE in order to operate these networks and things are becoming really complex. We simplify it for them with the same uh, VMware experience. We have a very good uh, uh, um, ability to do that. Um, you know, we sell products in VMware. Uh, unlike our competition that is mostly selling professional services and support, we try um, to focus more on the products and delivering the value. Of course, we have a services offering uh, because Telcos require some customizations, but we do focus on automation and simplicity in, throughout our, our stack. So just to, just to follow up, the, so, so in other words, the investment in education in this VMware ecosystem absolutely can be extended and applied into the telecom world. I think it's an important thing to do. And I was also, just going to add yeah. to that, the, the, our, our engagement in, in Otel was also something that we created a solutions brief with that we were released from Memorial Congress this week. Uh, but in conjunction with that, we also have a white paper coming out that has a much more expansive uh, explanation and documentation of what it was that we accomplished in, in the work that we've done together. And that's not something that is going to be a one-off thing, right? This is something that will stay evergreen, that we will continue to expand both the testing scope as well as the documentation for what the solution looks like and how it can be used, as well as documentation on for the, the, the V experts for how they can then leverage and, and realize the, the potential for what we're, we're creating together. Do you, do you, does Dell look at Otel as having the potential to facilitate the continued evolution of the actual telco industry, and if so, how? Well, I mean, it would be a horrible uh, answer if I were to say no to that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think, I honestly believe that one of the most difficult things about this idea of having a disparity ecosystem is not just trying to put it back together, but then also how to give yourself choice. So each time that you build one of those solution sets, like that exists as an island out of all the other possibilities that comes with it, right? And Otel seeks to not just be able to facilitate building that first solution set, right? Like that's what solution engineering can do, and that's generally done relatively protected uh, and internally. The open telecom ecosystem seeks to, to build that then to also provide the ability to very easily uh, change uh, specific components of that, whether that's a hardware component, a NIC, uh, whether a security patch just came out, or a change in, uh, in either TCP or TCA, or uh, we talked a little bit about for this specific engagement that uh, it was done uh, on uh, TCP 2.5. Correct. Uh, there, obviously, there's already a 2.7 and 3.0 is coming out. Mm -hmm. It's not like we're going to sit around and, and write our coattails of, of what 2.7 has happened. So this, is, this isn't uh, intended to be a one and done thing. So when we talk about trying to, to make that easier and simpler and de-risk all the risk that comes from trying to put all these things together, it's not just the, the one single solution that you've built in the lab. It's what's the next one and how do I optimize this? And I have specific requirements as a CSP how can I take something that you built that doesn't quite match it, but how do I make that adjustment? So that's, that's what we seek to do and to make it as easy and uh, as painless as possible. Now what's the engagement model with CSPs? Is it led by Dell? Only VMware partner? How does that work? So, it, yeah, I can take that. Uh, so that depends on the customer, but uh, typically customers, they want to choose the uh, cloud vendor. Uh, so they come to VMware, we want VMware. Typically they come from the IT side. They said, oh, we want to manage the network side of the house the same way as we manage the IT. We don't want to have special skill sets, special uh, teams. So we, they move from the IT to the network side, uh, and they want VMware there. Uh, and then, uh, obviously, they have an RFP process, and uh, they have hardware choices. They can go with Dell, they can go with others. Uh, we leverage vSphere uh, other compatibilities, so we can uh, be flexible with uh, the customer choice. Um, and then, you know, depending on which customer, how large they are, uh, uh, they select the um, network equipment provider that runs on top. Uh, we position our platform as multi-vendor, mm -hmm. uh, so many of them uh, choose multiple network function uh, providers. So we work with Dell, so assuming that the customer is uh, choosing Dell, uh, we work very closely with them, uh, offering the best solution uh, for the customer. We work with them sometimes to even design the boxes uh, to make sure that it fits their use cases and to make sure that it works properly. So we have a, a, a partnership, validation, certification end-to-end -end from the applications all the way down to the hardware. It's a fascinating place in history to be right now with 
5G, something that a lot of consumers sort of assume, it's like, oh hey, yeah we're already there, what's, what, what's the 6G thing going to look like? Well wait a minute, we're just at the beginning stages. Yep. And so you talk about disaggregation, reaggregation, or reintegration, the importance of that. Um, folks like Dell have experience in that space. Yeah. Folks at VMware have a lot of experience in the virtualization space. But I heard that VMware is being acquired by Broadcom, if it all goes through, of course. You don't need to comment on it. <laughs> but you mentioned something, SDDC, Software Defined Data Center. Um, that stack is sometimes misunderstood by the public at large, and maybe the folks in the EU, I will editorialize for a moment here, it is eliminating capture, in a way, by larger hyperscale cloud uh, providers. It, is, it, it absolutely introduces more competition into the market space. So it's interesting to hear Broadcom acknowledging that this is part of the future of VMware no matter what else happens. These capabilities that spill into the telecom space are something that they say they're going to embrace and extend. I think that's important for anyone who's evaluating this when they're, if, they're, if they're concerned, well wait a minute, yeah, I, I wanna, when I reintegrate, do I want VMware as part of this mix? Is that an unknown? It's pretty clear that that's something that is part of the future of VMware moving forward. That's, that's my personal opinion based on analysis, but you brought up SDDC, so I wanted, I wanted to mention that. Again, I'm not even ask, not gonna ask you to get into trouble on that at all. <laughs> um, what should we be, what, you know, kind of a, from a, a broad perspective, are there any services, outcomes, that are going to come out of all of this work? The agility that's being built by you folks and folks in you know, the open world, are there any specific things that you personally are excited about? Or you know, when we think about consumer devices getting data, what are the other kinds of things that this facilitates? Anything cool, either one of you? So specific use cases? Yeah, or? anything, anything. So get, so it's gotta be cool though, if it's not cool, okay. we're gonna <laughs> ask you to leave, uh, all I, right? I'll take that challenge. So, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think one of the things that uh, is interesting for something like Otel as it exists as being an open telecom ecosystem, there are going to be some CSPs that it's very difficult for them to have this optionality existing for themselves, especially when you start talking about tailoring it for specific CSPs and their needs. One of the things that becomes much more available to some of the smaller CSPs is the ability to leverage Otel and basically act as one of their pre-production labs. So that, this would be something that would be very specific to a customer and we would obviously make sure that it's completely isolated, but the intention there would be that, that it would open up the ability for for you know, what would normally take a much longer time period for them to receive some of the benefits of some of the changes that are happening within the industry, but they would have immediate benefit by leveraging, specifically looking at Otel to provide them with some of their solutions. And I, I know that you were also looking for specific use cases out of it, but like that, that's a, a huge deal for a lot of CSPs around the world that don't have the ability to, to lay out all the different uh, permutations that they are most interested in and start to put each one of those through a test cycle. So uh, a specific use cases for what this looks like is honestly the most exciting that I've seen for right now is on the private 5G networks, right? Uh, the specifically within mining industry, we have a, I, sorry for the audience, but we have a demo at our booth that starts to lay out exactly how it was deployed and kind of the, the AB of like what this looked like before the world of private 5G for this mining company and what it looks like afterwards and the ability for both safety as well as operational costs as well as their ability to obviously do their job better is, is night and day, right? Like it, it completely opened up a very analog system and opened up to a very digitalized system. And I would be remiss, but I didn't also mention Open Brew, uh, which is also an example <laughs> in our booth. We uh, saw it last night we saw, in I hope action. You did. I hope you did. So Open Brew is a, it's a small brewery in, in uh, Northeast America. And we basically took a very manual process of checking temperature and pressure on multiple different tanks along the entire uh, brewing process and digitized everything for them. And all of that was enabled by a private 5G deployment uh, that's built on Dell hardware. You asked for cool, I think we got it. I, yeah, it's cool. I, I, we I had think, a I think to beer. Cool brew, night. yes. Re beer, I think, is By always going to be a, a trump card there. Yeah. <laughs> at, least for, at least for folks from North America, right? Sure. We, we like our, our brew cool. 
Exactly. Guys, thank you so much for joining Dave and me course. talking about what Dell, Otel, and VMware are doing together. What you're enabling CSPs to do and achieve. We appreciate your time and your insights. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, our pleasure. For our guests and for Dave Nicholson, I'm Lisa Martin. You watch The Cube live from MWC 23. Day three of our coverage continues right after a short break. Thank you.